Hello, um, my name's Kate Nash. Um, I'm the sister of William Nash, who was shot dead on Bloody Sunday. Um, my father was also wounded, um, coming out to help him when he spotted, uh, spotted him laying on the ground near a rubble barricade. Um, they fired at my father. He was actually shot twice. He was shot in the arm and shot in the um, side, the left side. Um, they actually dragged the body then away from him and, and threw it into um, a Saracen along with two other young men who were dead also at the barricade. 17 year old, 19 year old and 20 year old. Um, I think they probably knew one another actually. But um, my father was very, very shocked. He thought the soldier was coming up then to actually um, finish him off. Um, but they said something, you know, and do you know my father to the day that he questioned why he allowed them to make a body? I used to try to explain to him, you know, he was a bit deaf. And I used to try to explain to him on his reason, he had a wee, um, he had a, a, a hearing thing, you know, in the house. And I used to use a little, the little microphone to try and explain to him about shock. And he'd been shot and looking at the other boys there, lying there and stuff. And But you know, see that generation, he was, he was a doctor, you know. Um, and, and he just didn't, um, shock didn't mean nothing to him, you know. Um, he just, he never was happy that he'd done that. And he blamed himself, actually, um, for what happened that day. But he was taken to hospital. He doesn't, has no idea how. All he remembered was that at the barricade. Um, it was other people who were able to, um, you know, give us his movements. But he eventually got to the hospital. And we got over, uh, we heard later on in the day, and uh, my uncle sort of came and got me and we were taken over to the hospital. Um, an awful shock to hear that your brother's dead, you know, and your father, your father's wounded and, but he's okay, you know, but we got to the hospital, you know, and a very traumatic place because I had to walk up um, floors because my sister wouldn't get into the loft. So I walked with her. Um, they, um, we got on, everybody was crying, you know, on each floor as we walked up to doctors, nurses, everybody was so upset. But we got to my father anyway, and um, he still had the arm up, you know, the wound hadn't been tended to. And I said to him, um, Dad, is that sore? And he just says, William's in the morgue, or Willie's in the morgue, you know. Um, but they, my mother was already in the hospital. Um, she'd had a heart attack a few days before Bloody Sunday. Um, and she was in there, but they decided not to tell her um, because they thought it would be too much for her. And um, so on the day, on the Wednesday, the day they were being buried, um, I still remember that very clearly. The day they were being buried, um, the doctors thought it would be too cruel, really, not to tell her. So my father was actually wheeled down, you know, and, and taken under with a local priest. And broke it to her and you know she never made a sound never made a sound she um she came home though um maybe a week later something like that and the moment she put her foot over the step she started to wail you know scream wally 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 and that screaming went on for a very long time um heart was broke they weren't at the funeral um and then the next thing was papers, the newspapers were coming out that Willie was a, 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 implying that he was a gunman, you know, with the barricade, gunmen and bombers. Um, General Jackson put that story around all the embassies in the world, you know, so that they could get that out. Um, they said, my father, uh, we weren't close to my father. They said that we were pro-Republican, um, pro-Republican, violent family. We were nothing of the sort nothing of a sort. Uh, my brothers were involved in sport and stuff like that. Charlie, you, you, you may have heard of Charlie, who, who boxed, you know, and, and did quite well in it. Um, he went to the Olympic Games actually later on that year, you know. But however, um, the army, the army, the army persecuted us for the next seven years. Strangely, they stopped after my mother died don't know what that was about but they were in our house two three four times a week um it slowed down after a couple of months slowed down a bit we we always felt that that was done 
that was done because they were trying to sort of um, taunt my brothers uh, and they joined in the IRA, you know, but didn't work anyway. Um, at an awful time, that campaign um, at Widgery, the Widgery uh, whitewash, my father went to that six weeks later. Um, they told my father that he didn't know his son. My father was right beside his son, William, and there was no gun. And if he, the proof of that is that there's a film done by an American uh, crowd at the time. And my father can be seen alone because the bodies are lying out of sight on the other side. But my father's seen alone, waving, you know, at, um, he's telling them to stop shooting, you know, this is my son, people could hear him, you know. But um, my father, the, the he, witnesses said that there was the bravest thing they ever seen, the way he came out. Uh, people couldn't hold him back. You know, the minute he spotted Willie, he, he started to come out. But um, And there were bullets flying all around him. But they, they intended that day, I think, to kill lots more people than that. But uh, we, we started the campaign, and, or, well, actually my mother. The, the campaign started the, the very next year because my mother was on a march. And, um, and the, the fact is the IRA kind of took it over after that. So I think a family stepped back. You know, a lot of them wouldn't agree with that. So because uh, none, of the, none of the people that were shot and killed were um, involved in the IRA. So, you know, we, we couldn't give the British an excuse like that. You know, they, they, um, they, they make us look even worse than they were already doing. You know, we're demonizing. They also said, you know, that we lived in squalor. Um, well, that was because whoever wrote that, that was their opinion. But I think what it was, was it was just, it was to make us look bad and they, you know, that we weren't deserving of justice or, or we deserve what we got and, and stuff like that. But we got the Savile, the Widgery, the Widgery whitewash was was later on overturned. We got a we got a, a, a an apology from the British government, whatever that would mean. Um, I think it was a political thing, you know, just a political thing. But um, I know I know what's said now is that um, unjustified and unjustifiable. I know those are powerful words, you know, but really. Uh, not meant some sort of a deal done where God knows who, you know, um, and not really meant for us at all. Um, even that day at the guilt hall when we were brought out onto the steps, you know, and, and I wasn't aware of it, but there was television at my feet and stuff like that, you know, and uh, the whole thing was choreographed, but I mean, I wasn't part of the choreograph. So, so uh, uh, obviously I wasn't, I was just out there to speak, but I was given a wee piece of paper uh, you know, there was words on it, you know, uh, 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 just or innocent and, you know, soldiers like that, a uh, wee short sort of statement like that. And um, when I got to the mic, of course, I kind of, I lost the head because Michael Mansfield had kind of told us upstairs, he says, I never went up the chain of command and that just was stuck in my head. Um, nine, nine rogue soldiers, you know, and there's no way, there's no way, I mean, Officers were involved in that. Officers, officers were involved in the in the in the the lies, the cover up, um, and 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 continued lying, um, even up until up to the saddle, you know. And not not one of the although although Jackson, General Jackson, was actually brought back twice. He clearly lied. Um, and it was never actually accused, and it, even though he was brought back twice, so. Why would why would nine nine ordinary soldiers, um, why would they why would they say that it was their fault, when when we know they were taking orders, you know, and now I mean what they're doing now is covering covering and trying to give these guys am amnesties, uh, plus other perpetrators, um, simply because um they're not really worried about victims. That's uh, it's uh, just getting their own guys off the hook, you know, but really, you know, and I've said it a lot, um, they all should be um, up in court, the British government for war crimes. They should be up, they should be up in the Hague and charged with war crimes for what they did that day and what they did many other days as well, the other people, you know, we weren't alone. Um, the Savile Inquiry was, as far as I was concerned, that was a complete loss. Um, like I say, there were soldiers getting warned about Savile was 
was warning soldiers about telling lies in court. Um, I mean, they could have been arrested there and then, and it didn't happen. Um, every time a, a witness mentioned national security, Savile shut everybody up. They had a witness who was um, a soldier who was on a video screen surrounded by a curtain so that the, the, fa the families couldn't see them. Um, only the solicitors, you know, could see them. And, and the curtains over that, but, but we could clearly hear that there was somebody in the room with him advising them. I mean, that's not on, probably a solicitor, but that was accepted, you know, and, 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 and just let go by. Um, so no, um, nothing fair, nothing honest about this at all. They blame Jared Donahue, um, said he had a nail bombs on him and we know, we know damn rightly he didn't have nail bombs on him. We actually know the, the police officers, um, the, or we know the police officers actually put them, the, the surgeon at the, the surgeon, uh, the soldier who was a surgeon, you know, the medical officer, he, um, had searched. Uh, uh, Jared Dunahy and he said there was nothing there was no nail bombs on him so there was another lie you know always they um, they lay the blame somewhere you know anywhere but um, now they're talking Boris Johnson's talking about amnesties and um, well I'll tell you what we're I'm fighting that as well because well everybody as I don't mean just me but um, I'm fighting that as well because um, I've joined a, a wee group of well, we've got together, Raymond McCord, cross community group. Um, Raymond McCord would be one, Kathy McElvenny, her sister was killed, UVF, you know, um, John Taggart, you know, people, Eugene Reevy, Michael Gallagher, Oma, you know, people like that. And what we're doing is we're, um, we've been visiting the, the, the British government over there, um, and meeting up with, um, MPs and stuff, um, to put our story in. Uh, they're, they're they're backing us up, you know, and they're actually signing our, you know, we we have like a declaration thing, and they're actually signing that. They say that they will support us, you know, and Simon Coveney uh, in the south of Ireland, he we have apparently have has support, um, and we're going to meet the the Taoiseach, uh on the third. Um, they have a talk with them. We're doing everything. We've been in contact with the Senate in America, you know, the Congress. Um, we're doing everything to keep the pressure on the, um, you know, but, oh, I, you know, I, I'm saying about that group and I almost forgotten. She, she's not a lady. You could forget. She's, she's very great. She's great. Um, her name, Julie Hamilton. She's from the, the Birmingham, the Birmingham bombings. So Julie's very much with us as well. You know, um, we're all passionate. We're all passionate for justice and, and it's not happening. And the way they've delayed this and, Light this, light their fists, the justice system, the, the public prosecution service, they're all a disgrace. They're, they're, every one of them is helping in the cover up and, and suppressing, suppressing uh, uh, the, the, the trials of these uh, soldiers, you know. So, so, but anyway, I think they all should be in the Hague at this stage. I mean, uh, even what they're doing now has got to be a crime. Surely it's a crime too for the for the prosecution service to be behaving this way. Why are they getting away with that? You know, it's, it's got that you just can't trust any of the authorities here. Um, everything seems to be suspect. Everything is everything is um, corrupt. You know, just corrupt. And it's as I'll tell you what. It's a sad way, sad country to live in, when you know all that's going on and you know children are growing up and you're thinking. What what kind of a what kind of a country are, are are they going to be living in? It's going to be destroyed and ruined unless people get things right. Unless unless we get geez, we just need to clean out the government, I think. And Stormont Stormont serves no purpose whatsoever anyway. Um, and it's never done anything for victims. Never never has. Um, it's just helped too to cover up. Uh, what happened here, you know, and there's collusion and um and there definitely is collusion. Um bloody awful it's you know I, it's it's unbearable to be honest with you